Here we've got a nice geometry problem. So we're gonna start with a right triangle and the base of this right triangle has length three plus two times the square root of three. And then the height of this right triangle is two plus the square root of three. And then furthermore, the altitude, that is this line segment of the right triangle, goes through the center of this circle. And then we've chosen the radius of this circle so that it goes through this vertex on the right triangle and so that it's tangent to the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And then our goal is to find this shaded area, which is up here in orange. Okay, so we're gonna do this uh, in a couple of steps. The first thing that we wanna do is find the length of the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And we can do that clearly just by using the Pythagorean theorem. So let's see how we can do that. So maybe if we call this length right here x, we know that x squared will be equal to this length squared plus this length squared. So let's write that out. Three plus two times the square root of three squared plus two plus the square root of three squared. Now we've just got some arithmetic to do. So let's see what we get here. So we'll have nine plus 12 times the square root of three plus, so then we'll have four plus three, that is 12. So that's just from foiling this term out. Then we'll have something similar over here. We'll have four plus four times the square root of three plus three. So next we'll consider the integers by themselves as being like terms and then everything connected to a square root of three to be like terms. So we've got nine, 12, four, and three to combine together, and then 12 root three and four root three to combine together. So doing that will give us 28 plus 16 times the square root of three. So now we've got x squared is equal to this number, and so that's the hypotenuse squared here. But we want the hypotenuse itself which means our hypotenuse will be given by the square root of 28 plus 16 times the square root of three. But there's actually a nice trick that we can use in order to denest the square root. And in fact, there's a formula for doing this kind of for a large variety of problems, but we're gonna do this just as a one-off. So let's assume that we can rewrite this as a plus b times the square root of three, where a and b are, well, rational numbers or integers would be even better. So this is only possible sometimes, but it turns out to be possible in this case. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube uh, figuring out when this kind of denesting is possible and when it isn't. I'll let you guys check that out if you want to. Okay, so if this is possible, then we can square that and build a system of equations for A and B. So let's do that. We'll square this left-hand side, giving us 28 plus 16 times the square root of three. And then we'll square the right-hand side, giving us A squared plus 3B squared plus 2AB times the square root of three. Again, that's just from foiling out what we have there with a plus b root three. Again, we're gonna think about our numbers, 28 and a squared plus three b squared as being like terms, and everything connected to a square root of three as being a like term, and really use the fact that the square root of three and the number one forms a basis for the vector space Q adjoining the square root of three if you wanna get really complicated here. But suffice it to say, we're gonna set the purple underlines equal to each other and the blue underlines equal to each other. So that's gonna give us a squared plus three B squared equals 28 and then two A B equals 16. Now we've got a nonlinear system of equations to solve. But now we can look at that and it might seem kind of tricky but it'll actually be helpful to multiply this equation by minus two and then add the two equations. So let's see what we get if we do that. So that's gonna give us a squared minus four a b plus three b squared equals, well now it'll be 28 minus two times 16, that's 28 minus 32, well that's gonna be negative four. And you might say, well, why did we do that? Well, we did that because now the left-hand side of this equation factors like the product of two binomials. 
we can take this guy right here and rewrite it as a minus 3b times a minus b. And then over here we have negative 4. But negative 4 only factors a couple of ways. We can factor it as maybe like negative 2 and positive 2, negative 4 and positive 1, or maybe negative 1 and positive 4. And playing around with it to see which one gives us a solution, we'll see that we'll need a minus 3b to be equal to negative 2, and we'll need a minus b to be equal to positive 2. And that gives us the following solution. We'll have a is equal to 4 and b is equal to 2. Again, any other factorization of minus 4 won't give us a um, system of equations which has a nice solution. But putting this all together, we see that we can take our hypotenuse here, which had this really gnarly form of the square root of 28 plus 16 times the square root of 2, and rewrite it as 4 plus 2 times the square root of 3. And that's exactly what we'll do here. So 4 plus 2 times the square root of 3. Now, let's get rid of this calculation and then we'll move on to the next step. So far, we've calculated our hypotenuse, which means we have completed this right triangle. But since we've completed this right triangle, that means we can find these angles just using some trigonometry. So first off, what I wanna do is find the measurement of this angle right here. So obviously, since we have all of these lengths, it shouldn't be too hard just by using any of the inverse trig functions we want, but I'll just say that maybe using the inverse sine function is best. So maybe we'll call this angle right here theta, and notice that we'll have sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, so that's gonna be two plus the square root of three over four plus two times the square root of three. But now notice we can factor a two out of the denominator here. That gives us two plus root three over two times two plus root three. But notice that cancels down to one half. So we've got sine of theta equals a half. So that gives us a nice value for theta immediately. We have theta equals pi over six radians. And we'll actually keep everything in terms of radians, but Pi over six radians is 30 degrees if you'd rather think of it like that. So maybe let's go ahead and put in here that this entire angle measurement is pi over six. Okay, now let's get rid of this calculation and we'll do some more. So we just got done calculating this angle, which has a measurement of pi over six radians or 30 degrees. And our next big goal is to calculate the radius of our circle. And we'll do that by taking a line segment from the center of our circle to this vertex of the triangle. So let's maybe introduce that new line segment here. And then I wanna make the claim that this line segment bisects this angle. And we can do that by considering two more triangles. So I'll take a line segment here from the center of the circle that will go to this point of tangency and keep in mind that if it's going to a point of tangency, we know that it intersects at a right angle. That means that this is also a right angle. But we've got a radius of our circle here. We have a radius of our circle here. So this side length is the same as this side length. Furthermore, these two triangles share this side. But then if they're both right triangles, and they have two side lengths that are equal, by the Pythagorean theorem, their last side length will also be equal. But what that means is that by the side, side, side theorem, this triangle up here and this triangle down here are congruent. But that means that this angle right here is equal to this angle right here, which means each of them is equal to pi over 12. So that means we can erase this pi over six here and replace it with a pi over 12. And that's exactly what we'll do. So we've got a pi over 12 for our angle measurement here. We have a pi over 12 for our angle measurement here. But now the tangent of pi over 12 will be the radius of our circle divided by this three plus two times the square root of three. And that's just by the definition of the tangent. So let's maybe write that down. So we've got the tangent of pi over 12 is equal to the radius of our circle, 
which is something that's going to clearly be helpful for getting the area of our shaded region divided by 3 plus 2 times the square root of 3. Okay, so now we can easily solve that for the radius. So that tells us that the radius will be equal to 3 plus 2 times the square root of 3 times the tangent of pi over 12. Then you might say, well, what's the tangent of pi over 12? And that's actually not like a super common value, but we can use the fact that pi over 12 is 1 half times pi over 6. And then we can use the half angle formula for tangent to put that in terms of trigonometric values of pi over 6, which are a little more well known. So let's do that. So here we have 3 plus 2 times the square root of 3, and then we'll replace tangent of pi over 12 with 1 minus cosine pi over 6 over sine pi over 6. And let's just be real clear what's going on here. We're using the half angle formula for tangent that says tangent of theta over 2 is equal to 1 minus cosine theta over sine theta, which you can derive that a number of different ways, but I think that's a pretty well-known formula. And then next up, we can just do a fairly simple calculation here. So sine of pi over 6 is equal to a half. Cosine of pi over 6 is the same thing as the square root of 3 over 2. So that means we can rewrite this as 3 plus 2 times the square root of 3. And then dividing by a half means that we're multiplying by 2. So that leaves us with 2 minus the square root of 3 in the numerator. Now we've got to multiply this out. So let's see what that gives us. So we have 3 times 2 is 6. And then we'll have 2 root 3 times negative root 3. That'll give us minus 6. And then we'll have 4 root 3 minus 3 root 3. So notice everything cancels down and we have the square root of 3. So all in all, we have calculated the radius of our circle and we've determined that that is the square root of 3. Notice we've got a bunch of radii of our circle in this picture. We've got one right here, we've got one right here, and we have one right here. So we'll just keep in mind that all of these lengths are root 3. Okay, let's get rid of this calculation and then we'll move on. So we just got done calculating the radius of our circle at the square root of 3. Now we're ready to fill in a couple of other measurements. So we know the length of this line segment here is 2 plus the square root of 3, but the length of the subsegment here is root 3. So that tells us the length of all of this that's left over is 2. Now we have a new right triangle in the mix which has height here of square root of 3. It has a base here which has an unknown length and it has hypotenuse here of 2. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of this bit that's left over here. And that's not too hard. We'll have that the distance here squared plus the square root of 3 squared must be 2 squared, which is 4. So this here needs to be 1. And then from there, we can calculate this angle. So let's maybe, for the time being, call this angle alpha. And notice that we have the ability to find all of the trig values of this angle alpha, given that we've completed this right triangle. Let's maybe find the sine of alpha. So let's notice that the sine of alpha will be opposite over hypotenuse. That's a half. But that means that alpha is pi over 6 or 30 degrees, just like we had down here. So let's maybe insert that into the picture. So I'll erase this alpha and I'll write pi over 6. And then we can rephrase our original goal a new way. So notice our goal, which is to find the area of this orange shaded bit, is exactly the same as finding the area of this triangle and then subtracting the area of this sector of the circle or the area of this pizza slice. So that's the only thing left to do. So like I just said, our goal area is really the area of this triangle minus the area of the sector of the circle. Now we're ready to make this calculation. So notice that this triangle has a base of 1 and a height of the square root of 3, which means using the formula 1 half base times height, we know the area of that triangle is the square root of 3 over 2. Next, we can calculate the area of this sector. 
So in other words, the area of this bit, which I'm shading here in blue, the area of that pizza slice, well, that's gonna be equal to the angle measure divided by two times the radius squared. So for our case, that'll be pi over 12 times the radius, which is the square root of three squared. So let's just maybe recall real quick how we did that. That's by the formula, which is theta over two times r squared, which gives us the area of a sector of a circle where the angle is theta. Now we're ready just to finish off the calculation. So that's gonna give us the square root of three over two minus, well now we'll have a three in the numerator, a 12 in the denominator, so minus pi over four. And that's a good place to stop.